As the boy walked the beach at dawn, he noticed an older man ahead of him, picking up starfish and flinging them into the sea. Finally catching up with the man, he asked what he was doing. The answer was that the stranded starfish would die if left in the morning sun. But the beach goes on for miles, and there are millions of starfish, countered the boy. How can your effort make any difference? The older man looked at the starfish in his hand and then threw it to safety in the waves. It makes a difference to this one. The story of the starfish reflects our values at the Detroit Zoological Society, where we think every individual animal matters. Wildlife are facing great challenges from changing climate and habitat loss to poaching and the exotic animal trade, leaving many species threatened and endangered. The Detroit Zoological Society is actively involved in wildlife conservation efforts worldwide, far beyond the 125 acres of the Detroit Zoo. In the last two years alone, we were engaged in conservation projects on six continents. By supporting our wildlife conservation efforts, you're helping to ensure the long-term survival of critically endangered amphibians, reptiles, birds, mammals, and invertebrates that represent the biodiversity of life on our planet. It's our hope that our community will be motivated to join us on this journey and commit to a better future for all of us that share this magnificent planet. One of the Detroit Zoological Society's many international conservation efforts is with the Gorilla Rehabilitation and Conservation Education Center, also known as GRACE. Located in the Democratic Republic of Congo, GRACE provides a home and much needed care for orphaned growers gorillas that have been rescued by wildlife authorities. The gorillas at GRACE have come into human care because their parents were killed by poachers. Ranging in age from three to 14 years, these animals wouldn't be able to survive on their own. The dedicated Congolese staff provides for all of their needs to return them to good health with the hope of eventually releasing them back into the wild. The gorillas at Grace currently live in a 24-acre forest enclosure, the largest gorilla enclosure in the world. One of the Detroit Zoological Society's roles is to help with veterinary care. We help with thorough wellness exams, which includes doing a complete blood count and blood chemistry tests, which aid in the diagnosis of disease and provide important information about the function of the kidneys and other organs. X-rays of animals that had suffered injuries in the past, dental X-rays, which is something that had never been performed before, and we clean their teeth to make sure that they stay healthy. Grower's gorillas are critically endangered, with only 5,000 left in the wild. It's very important that we take care of every last Grower's Gorilla that we can. The Detroit Zoological Society and the Holtzman Wildlife Foundation supported construction of the night house where the gorillas spent their evenings and the road that people use to deliver supplies to Grace. We helped to develop education programs for kids and adults in nearby communities, including integration of humane messages for the primary and secondary school groups that they work with both on-site and in local villages. The staff engages with people of all ages, helping to foster behavioral changes that result in a positive impact for the people, animals, and their shared home. Our CEO, Ron Kagan, is on the board of GRACE and a past chair. We were recently honored, along with eight of our other partners, with the International Conservation Award from the Association of Zoos and Aquariums for our work with GRACE. This partnership is among the most exciting and promising conservation, welfare, and education initiatives in which the Detroit Zoological Society is involved. We look forward to continuing this unique partnership with GRACE and to dedicating our efforts towards ensuring the safety of Grower's gorillas for generations to come. The cold, forbidding mountains of Central Asia may seem inhospitable to some, but to the beautiful and elusive snow leopard, it's home. The snow leopard is a charismatic and iconic species that is vital to mountain ecosystems, but their numbers are dwindling. Poachers seek their fur, mining destroys their mountain homes, and villagers who rely on livestock to survive will kill these cats to protect their animals. 
It's estimated that only 4,000 to 6,500 snow leopards remain in the wild. The Detroit Zoological Society is actively working to conserve snow leopards in China and Nepal. We've partnered with the Snow Leopard Trust and other organizations that are striving to create sustainable conservation programs that benefit both snow leopards and local communities that share these mountain habitats. In the field, we use heat and motion-triggered trail cameras to remotely monitor snow leopards and their prey. We've gathered hundreds of photos and are working to determine what are the important locations for snow leopards in the area. We're also interviewing local residents so we can better understand the situation. With snow leopards preying on the livestock, we need to develop strategies to reduce this human leopard conflict. Our ultimate goal is to help set up protected areas to ensure snow leopards have a safe place to live. All of us are part of the same ecosystem, from apex predators like snow leopards to the lowest plants, intermediate consumers, and even scavengers. We're all part of the same complex tapestry. Every creature, big or small, contributes to the planet's health. The Panamanian golden frog is a species of amphibian from the central highlands of Panama. In recent years, this amphibian has undergone dramatic declines. There are several reasons for the decline of this amphibian, some of which include a parasitic fungus known as chytrid, over sedimentations of rivers and stream beds where this amphibian breeds, and also over collection for the exotic pet trade. In the year 2000, the National Amphibian Conservation Center opened at the Detroit Zoo. This was the first major facility dedicated to exhibiting and conserving amphibians that are endangered throughout the world. Since this conservation center opened, the Panamanian golden frog has been housed there in biosecure rooms. We are breeding this amphibian with the hope of eventually reintroducing it into the wild. In the summer of 2015, I traveled to El Valle, Panama, a town nestled in the crater of an extinct volcano and the former home of this now thought to be extinct amphibian. While in Panama, I worked closely with staff at the El Valle Amphibian Conservation Center, redesigning and constructing new habitats in preparation for an event known as Golden Frog Day. This event, which is thrown throughout the country, helps raise awareness to the plight of this endangered amphibian. Amphibians are currently the most threatened species of animals in the world, with about 40% of all species at risk. It is important to conserve these amphibians due to their vital role in ecosystems around the world. It is our hope that someday there will be a safe place in Panama for the golden frogs at the Detroit Zoo and that this species will not disappear from the planet for good. One of the great conservation partnerships the Detroit Zoological Society has is Polar Oceans Research Group. They're led by world-renowned polar ecologist Dr. Bill Frazier and his work takes place in Antarctica at the U.S. Palmer Station and it's been going on for almost four decades now. Dr. Frazier's been uh, studying the penguins and the environment down there, and it's a, a bigger collaboration of a long-term ecological research study of various different principal investigators studying all different parts of the climate and the ecosystem. And we're all working together here to understand what's happening in a ch changing climate. I spent part of the 2015-2016 Austral Summer working with Dr. Frazier's research team. We studied southern giant petrels, brown skuas, adeli, and gentoo penguins, and a few more species. The Antarctic Peninsula is a, a quite harsh environment. Uh, there's a lot of wind, a lot of weather, and a lot of ice to deal with. Every morning uh, we got up early and if conditions were appropriate, we zodiaced around to various islands, studying the birds and looking at the environment. We did a lot of work counting birds, so we would count different colonies, see how many adults were there, how many uh, chicks we could find. We also uh, took various measurements on birds to see different growth rates. We'd see these penguins lay their eggs, work hard to incubating them until they hatched, and then they would continue to take turns going out to feed, catching krill and fish, and put all their efforts into raising their young. I've loved our planet ever since I was a young kid, but sometimes it's hard in day-to-day -day life to see changes in our environment or what's going on, but going down there and working in Antarctica was just 
amazing to see the changes in the environment and the struggles that the Adelis are going through. And uh, we just ask you to join in with our mission and wherever we go, we want to leave the smallest footprint we can. We live in an incredible world and it's our responsibility to protect it. Whether it's penguins or Panamanian golden frogs or gorillas or snow leopards, we're involved in really unique and important work all over the world. It's so important for you to help us save species. Thank you.